So Kathy Wood of ARK Invest has increasingly become more and more bullish on Tesla stock as recently in the last few trading sessions, she's been purchasing millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of Tesla stock. Now she began this buying spree back on January 25th. However, if you take a look, Tesla stock still hasn't made any significant moves since then. Now, if you guys have been following the channel, then you guys know that back when Tesla hit $180 per share last week, I said that I wasn't still comfortable in buying as I wasn't yet confirmed that this was the bottom. And I'll go ahead and touch on that further in this video, but I want to highlight something else that's pretty notable. For example, Kathy Wood and ARK Invest recently released their big ideas for 2024, which is an annual research report, which has over a hundred pages of beautiful graphs that you guys could check out. And I highly encourage you guys to look at them. However, I want to go ahead and highlight some of the areas within her annual report that I thought were pretty interesting in regards to Tesla stock and pretty much Tesla stock only because she does talk about a few different industries as well, but I want to just highlight some things interesting that she mentioned about Tesla. Starting off with this page right over here, which says rights law points to faster EV charging rates. And it says that the EV charging rates seem to be a good proxy for overall performance, including efficiency, range, and power. And it also says that in the past five years, charging rates for 200 miles of range have improved nearly threefold from 40 minutes to 12 minutes and could potentially drop another threefold to four minutes over the next five years. And if you look in the graph, you see that back in 2018, it took 40 minutes just to get 200 miles of range and charging. Now, the reason why this is pretty significant is because one of the big issues for people converting to EV uh, vehicles is pretty much this anxiety of range. Everyone's like, well, I don't wanna have to wait to charge my vehicle for too long, especially when if you have a gas you know, car, you could pretty much a uh, refuel in less than five minutes and get way more than 200 miles of range. And so this improving within the next few years is one of the reasons why I'm still bullish on Tesla stock in the long term. I know in the past few months, I made a lot of bearish videos on Tesla stock, but that was just me highlighting that Tesla stock was going to continue going downwards. And I know a lot of individuals kind of see those videos and they assume that I'm just this big Tesla stock bear. But the reality is I'm still bullish on Tesla in the long term, I was just saying that prices uh, for Tesla or the, the stock price was most likely going to be falling down. And that's exactly what we saw, but don't get it twisted. I'm still bullish on Tesla in the long term. Now there was this other page highlighting that the auto industry is likely to consolidate, which is really just a nice way of Kathy and her team saying that the legacy automakers are screwed because it says if EV adoption continues to gain traction, traditional automakers may be forced to restructure and consolidate. And we see that over here on the right, the trend for EV uh, uh, as far as market share has been growing. And then on the left, you hear all the announcements made in the later end of 2023. So literally just last month where you hear Ford cutting on their uh, EV uh, product line as well as Volkswagen and GM. And so <laughs> this is another reason why I'm bullish on Tesla stock going forward because we're seeing a lot of the competitors kind of pull away because they have to focus on actually making you know their shareholders uh, more profits, right? They have to look more attractive for their shareholders because their stocks have been doing bad, especially when you consider that they're losing a ton of money in the EV vehicle section. And so, you know, them kind of pulling out is putting more of this advantage for Tesla stock moving forward. And eventually these other automakers are going to have to kind of switch to more of the EV product line, but that's going to hurt them because they're putting, they're, they're pretty much pulling out of the race. And so this is uh, an advantage for Tesla stock. And this is something I've highlighted on the channel before. It's not something new or or brand new information. It's just nice to see uh, Kathy Wood and her team put like a nice little graph for it. Now moving to this section right over here, that's a bit more controversial. It talks about many EV manufacturers are struggling to scale profitability. And it says that in the absence of an EV supply chain, Tesla had little choice but to vertically integrate. However, supply chains are evolving and other manufacturers in the auto space will be able to reach profitability in the EV sector if they scale, but the problem is many of them are pulling back from the market like we, what we saw in the last slide. And because of that, the already profitable leaders like Tesla, they're cutting prices aggressively. And you know, ARK, is, or Ark Invest is saying that this is you know something that uh, Tesla has an advantage on. And so the reason why I say this is controversial is because um, it's viewed from two different points of views, right? So 
in the short term, when you hear Tesla cutting prices, well, that's bad for the stock, right? We hear uh, when Tesla's cutting prices in the US or in China, we see pretty much Tesla stock fall down because Wall Street doesn't like that because Wall Street looks at things quarter to quarter and we know that that hurts the profit margins. But what Kathy Wood and ARK Invest is saying is that long term, this is gonna drive more success to Tesla and really just bury the competition. And I agree with that long term, but the problem is Wall Street doesn't look at the market in that way. And that's something that we have to kind of highlight as well, right? When we talk about Wall Street, who are we talking about? Is it some big shadowy figures? No, right? So <laughs> when we talk about Wall Street, we're talking about financial institutions, which control, uh, which according to FINRA is 70% of the market volume. And so they pretty much dominate the price action for the markets. And the thing you have to understand is that hedge funds, they're gonna look at things differently than like fund managers like Kathy Wood, who are, manage ETF. And the reason is because of the pay structure and incentives. See, hedge funds, they kind of have to look at things quarter to quarter because they have to drive profits as that's one of the portions in which they get paid. It's by like not only management fees, but also, uh, also like performance fees. And so if a hedge fund doesn't perform well, well, the fund manager doesn't make money. And also people who put their capital into the hedge fund, they're like, hey, look, I could just put capital in the you know, SPY index ETF if you're not going to perform well. And so that's why hedge fund managers, they have to constantly be looking at what's profitable now for this quarter so that they could go ahead and make more money. However, people like uh, Kathy Wood, you know, fund managers in the uh, ETF space, it's slightly different because they do have a management fee, right? It's usually uh, from like 0.1 to 1%. But the difference is, they don't have to look at things from a you know myopic perspective. It's not quarter to quarter, right? Because how Kathy Wood makes money is pretty much just people putting money into her fund. And if her fund grows larger, well, that's a lot of money for Kathy. And Kathy could perform horribly uh, one year and still make millions of dollars in profits uh, at, at, from the fees of people pouring money into her fund. And so, yeah, that kind of sucks, but it also provides this kind of a unique view where Kathy doesn't have to focus on quarter to quarter year to year and really just can look at things from a longer perspective. And so that's pretty much a lot of what she highlights uh, in her annual report, looking at things from a long-term perspective. And so when we talk about the price cuts for Tesla, yeah, in the short term, that's bad and that causes Tesla stock to fall down. But in the long term, it is undercutting, you know, the future competitors or the competitors who are trying to enter into the EV space. And that is one of the reasons why Tesla is still going to continue to dominate. And so uh, again, it's a bit controversial. There's so many different views with that. And so we'll go ahead and highlight that in a further video. But with that said, I want us to go ahead and hop into my laptop. This way we could take a look at Tesla stock from a technical perspective, as well as just cover some other details as well. Some of the things that we recently seen or have witnessed. But before we do so, just a friendly reminder that if you have not done so already, consider tapping that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future video. And with that said, let's go ahead and hop into my laptop. Alrighty, so we are officially in my laptop, but before we go ahead and touch on the price action for Tesla stock, I wanna quickly just glance over Apple as we know that a lot of the mega cap stocks yesterday had their earnings, and I wanna quickly just recap on that. As we know, these mega cap stocks, they have a huge weighting on the index, such as the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ, and that has influence on the direction of the overall markets and so we saw Apple pretty much fall down in the after hours I touched a little bit more into details on Apple uh, and its earnings if you know from the fundamental perspective uh, for those within the push and profit private group I did it in the private video uh, and then we also had Amazon which did well in the after hours at the earnings but it pretty much moved flat for the trading session uh, we saw meta uh, do extremely well in the after hours as well we heard uh, news of buybacks and also announcements of future dividends which shows maturity in a company but didn't have a huge move uh, like we saw with Apple and uh, one of the things I highlighted for those within the push and profit private group is that at 9 30 a.m. before the market or I guess three minutes after the market opened I said as an intraday idea I like Apple off the $180 uh, support area and in fact if we kind of just map it out and kind of just look at Apple uh, from when I called that intraday idea, uh, pretty much Apple did about, and let's just even do it to the close of the day, almost uh, 4%. If you got out at exactly the top, which of course is not always going to happen, but 4%, which uh, definitely a great intraday idea uh, for those within the Push and Profit Private Group. I typically uh, highlight some intraday ideas for those that like those uh, day trade ideas, but mostly I, I focus on swing trade ideas as well. Um, and so if you're new to the channel, I often talk about the markets from a 
long-term perspective as I do have a long-term uh, portfolio, but I also have a trading account that's separate. And so if you're interested uh, in being a part of the Push and Profit private group and having access to my daily briefings uh, where I talk about the market in much more details than I do in YouTube as it's a bit more boring and it's for those people that are really interested, uh, definitely check out uh, some of the links in the description below because one of the links is going to be a link to join. There is a massive coupon code we're just uh, typing in Feb coupon code FEB. Uh, you get 70% off to join for just $12 for the first month. And of course, you could cancel at any time. Uh, and so if you're interested, again, check out the links in the description below. But with that said, let's go ahead and switch over to Tesla, right? So Tesla pretty much fell down uh, from the beginning of the day, although we had this rebound at around 182, which was the low for the day. And if we kind of scale back out to like that daily time frame, I mentioned earlier in this video that Kathy Wood bought at around, or she started buying a dip at 180. Pretty much, um, there hasn't been any crazy move with Tesla as it's been consolidating, and that's pretty much something I've highlighted uh, on this channel before. That we're at this area where there's a lot of volume relative to price in regards to Tesla, and when there's a lot of volume relative to price that means again exchanging between buyers and sellers and so that means that we're kind of in this sideways channel and that's why i didn't say uh, i didn't buy the dip in my long-term portfolio for tesla although uh, i do want to clarify that you should never trade or invest based on what i say or anyone else's uh, opinion on the market you should only trade and invest in whatever you see value on uh, but you know for a while as tesla has been falling down pretty much i called it since uh, december 28th tesla was falling down and i said look i'm not buying the dip because the dip can always get dippier and so i want to wait for that confirmation of either breaking up or breaking you know at, you know to the uptrend or if it falls down below i want to monitor that and we're still in that current area in regards to tesla stock and so you know, I've been kind of providing a bull case and a bear case. And the bear case is if we fall down below, uh, which is, is still possible, right? We still have a lot to go. And we know that today we had the job reports, non-farm payroll. As you guys know, I don't just only look at the charts. I always uh, kind of joke around saying that stocks don't have to adhere to whatever squiggly lines you draw on the charts, that you want to pay attention to the fundamentals and the macro environment. And today we got the non-farm payroll and it came a lot hotter than what was anticipated and so that's why uh, if we go ahead and look at spy actually which is the s p 500 index etf we saw it pretty much pull back aggressively after that report although we did start bouncing more to the uptrend and so one of the things is the market digesting that that job data and although uh we you know it is important one of the things i've been saying for quite a while is that th the job data uh, it, it's been getting revised very often and I'm not trying to be someone with a tinfoil hat like a conspiracy theorist, uh, theorist but we've seen the job data constantly get large revisions again revisions aren't out of the ordinary but we're, what we're seeing is pretty much the job data saying oh look the job market is looking super strong and then next month in the next report in super small letters there's a revision saying oh actually it wasn't that great and so i think the markets are kind of tuning out the noise from uh the the pretty much the hot report we got from today and so that's something that that's pretty notable and so uh the reason that matters is because of course a hotter job market contributes to uh more in, uh, inflation and of course the federal reserve is looking at that that data to uh, identify when they should start cutting rates and so now we're seeing the fed swaps uh, kind of price out the idea of cuts in may we're also seeing the future markets now price out the 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 rate cuts in may and so that's pretty bad we'll, we'll definitely want to continue updating on that and looking into that but from a bearish perspective if we see tesla fall down uh, one of the things we have to understand is, again, little volume relative to price. So if there's selling pressure, it could get amplified. And we still have that gap that we've never filled at 145. It's still the area I'm looking at. I've been saying this for a while. I haven't changed the view. Of course, do we absolutely have to fall down to that area? No, right? And that's something that I want to clarify, right? I know people say, oh, I did my fundamental analysis. I did my technical analysis. I looked at alternative data. I did all this, right? It doesn't matter what type of analysis you do, although it gives you a better indicator of where the things are going or where, where things are going it just gives you an idea of where the trend could be going but the idea is that the market moves based on capital going in and out and so again we could have something overpriced and still continue going up or we could also have something oversold and continue going down and i think a lot of people get that wrong in the markets they think well oh this is oversold it has to start uh you know 
bouncing up or no it could still continue going down again it's based on the capital going in and going out and so again we're seeing again a lot of capital being traded around here so we're not seeing that movement and i hope that this kind of clarifies more of how the market moves just think of it think of it as money going in and money going out and right now we have a lot of it going in and out at the same time so that's why you're you're getting that up and down direction and that's something i've highlighted within the push and profit private group for those uh, about tesla that Right now, we're not seeing those big moves. We're not seeing uh, anything because for something that have a big move, you have to see a low volume relative to price and you have to see the order books get pushed up or pushed down. And right now, we're not in that area. And so could we fall down to 145? Yeah, but it's not guaranteed. And so what's the bull case, right? Because of course, I just talked about the bear case. The bull case is, well, yeah, we've been kind of teetering around this $180 level. Once we go to around, and I've I said like around over here, 200 and like I, earlier, I think I said 204. Uh, as you know, when the price action kind of updates, it kind of shifts the volume a bit. But what I'm trying to say is around over here, I want to see Tesla stock go closer to showing and identifying that uptrend before I add in into my long-term portfolio. Does that mean that you have to absolutely do that? No, right? That's just when I'm looking to buy. I know some individuals, they bought uh, at the 180 and they're buying again um, at the 180 and that's completely fine. I just like to wait for more confirmation even in my long-term portfolio uh, as I, I don't want to buy something that could end up being a falling knife. You don't want to catch the, the falling knife, right? That's how you get bloody hands, um, right? So that's what we're looking at. And of, of course, as we continue pushing forward, I think if we do get that confirmation, we could see Tesla stock rise up fairly quickly. Uh, but the idea is there's, again, a lot of volume relative to price around over here. And then, of course, we run into the same problem that we've seen with Tesla for the last three years. I mean, pretty much since 2021, Tesla has been getting rejected by this descending trend line. Now, does that mean that Tesla can never break out of this descending trend line? Again, Absolutely not. The market does not care about your squiggly lines on the chart. A technical analysis drawing these lines kind of just measures where we're at. And so typically when we get closer to these areas, we see a lot of selling with Tesla. As we know, Tesla has a lot of retail holding uh, in comparison to a lot of the other mega cap stocks where they have a lot of institutional buyers. And retail looks more heavily on technical analysis. And so that's providing a bit of a challenge for Tesla. And so that's something else we're going to want to monitor. But uh, with that said, you guys let me know in the comment section down below. Are you guys adding more shares of Tesla in your long-term portfolio or are you guys still waiting? Uh, again, it's been kind of, uh, let's go to like a daily chart. It's been kind of, you know, going up and down over here. Uh, you know, I'm, I told you guys what I'm doing, but you guys let me know in the comment section down below. And also, I haven't been trading Tesla recently as there's been so many other great trade opportunities. For example, I highlighted earlier today the trade idea with Apple um, as far as intraday trade ideas. Uh, so you guys let me know what stocks have you guys also been trading because again trading and investing are two separate vehicles but with that said guys before you guys go consider watching this next video right over here as that's a great video talking about line charts i recommend you guys watch that video and i'll see you guys on that next video take care guys